All right, I'm back. Made it to a very nice, whew, made it to a very nice halfway point. I'm coming up on the uh, body of water here. I believe it's James River, which is huge. And uh, this is a really nice area. I don't come here often enough. I think if I came out to these parks to unwind more and stay away more, stay away from uh, technology just a little bit more, I would uh, probably be more appreciative of Virginia because it's really nice. Definitely, uh, definitely a fan of these parks here. Plus, they keep them clean around here. Like these parks are clean. A lot of uh, a lot of nice neighborhoods in this area. Just in this park alone, around this park, extremely nice neighborhoods. Like you come back here, people are just kind of squinting at you. You got like a beat up truck. People are just kind of looking at you. But this is where I'm at. I'll see if I can get a view of the, uh, of the river there. I'm not well up uh, on my geography in this area, so. But it's, uh, it's definitely big enough to have naval bases in the area and have shipyards and build ships. Here's where I'm at. I'm at the three mile mark. No bicycles and motorcycles allowed on the trailer pass, so I gotta find a park where you can do something like that. Then rent a scooter and then just go out and take care of that. But uh oh, I am here. Uh yeah, so that is James River. That is a huge body of water over there. I I think it connects via this bridge right here with a line on it. And then uh Five. Oh, I guess I guess this uh, walk is five miles, so it's about ten thousand steps. But uh, have a I have two miles left here. Uh, I might walk along the meadow path just for a little bit of ease here. That's the meadow path right there, and then go up to the museum. It's still the same, it's still the same amount of distance really. Uh, but uh, I spent a lot of time going up and down trails to get over here. I was trying to beat the sun down because uh, they lock at the park during sundown. I don't know if they do that during the summers though. That might be that might be different in the summer. But uh, make sure it's safe to cross here. Let's go ahead and cross the street here. This is something you you see. At least this is something I see around here. And that's uh, historical signs that state what happened in this area. Uh, so let's have a look at this. So looks like a guy named Captain Waters gave his name to this land here in 1624. Oh, looks like some people didn't like that. Force of 30 uh, Mountain Militia, led by Captain Edward Mallory, repulsed with the British foraging party. Of course, um, like before, before the British were here, it was really the Dutch that were here. Uh, so getting to the end here, uh, after all the fighting had done, this is, this is way back in, way back when, like none of this stuff was here, none of this infrastructure here. I'm sure the land was somewhat the same but the trees might have all been different and the, the waterways might, might have been different. Uh, here they regained their boats, but left mortally wounding, more, mortally wounded Captain Brown behind. So yeah, so there, there's not a place where you can go here and not find 
like some type of battle or skirmish going down. In fact, if you come here to Virginia, any direction you walk on or any, any way you go, there's going to be some history about some people fighting each other. Not just with like the natives, but people fighting each other over land, people fighting each other over waterways, people fighting each other over all kinds of crazy stuff. Stuff that's not written down in any history books. People fighting over cemeteries out here. And this is way back, way back before the 1900s. It's really crazy stuff. <clears throat> but uh, let's go over here and have a look over here. Uh, that's the Meadows Trail right there. I think I just might take that trail. Gosh, I definitely want to get me some kettlebells and come out here and work out here. Just work right on that dock right there. Let's go and have a look. Normally I don't do videos this long, but uh, there's a lot of places and a lot of areas that people don't, don't get to see. Like a lot of people go to Seattle. They don't know that in Pioneer Square. There's an underground area with shops and a former uh, a former uh, train depot that used to go through there that's all walled off, but they still kept it the same way. A lot of people don't know about any of that stuff in Seattle. A lot of people don't know about any of the history in Portland or, uh, or why it's made up the way it is. A lot of people don't know, or a lot of people, a lot of people don't know about like San Francisco and, and that history. And there's just, there's a lot to these places that you can't see if you're like a cursory tourist or you're just visiting or flying through or driving through. So let's go have a look here. Oh, down there, that's closed for environmental reasons. So let's walk this way. And you'll see that everywhere uh, around here. You'll see, if you, if you like decide to move to Virginia, decide to live here for whatever reason, like the first thing you're gonna see probably right next to your house on the adjacent street is a sign talking about the history from the 1600s that's everywhere around here this place is like extra country it's like country with a capital c look at that now that's one thing i'll admit here the sound doesn't have anything like this this is a much better view and less badly smelling than uh and the sound back home in uh, the rented area. <sighs> yeah, man, you walk through downtown Seattle, it just, gosh, it just smells terrible. And you get to Pike Place Market and you see them working with the fish and that smells like 20 times better than the downtown Seattle area. And this was, this was before, this was way before all the tent cities and Nickelville and all that stuff. You go to downtown Seattle, it smells like dead sea and dead fish everywhere. Oh, it looks like we can't go in there. Plus, it's a really wavy, so I don't really have the right shoes to, <coughs> to go down there. Looks like to that dock right there. But yeah, man, do some kettlebell work. That'd be the place right there. One of the things you want to be aware of if you're walking around here, and this happened to me when I first got here, is there's a lot of parasites in the grass and in the sand. So if you're walking, if you're walking on, um, on grass like this, especially long grass like this, see all that long grass right there? You just got to be careful about where you're stepping because they can contain ticks and all kinds of things. I caught, I caught the, uh, the chigger bug out here. My first, actually it's like, gosh my second day here and I was just hanging out at one of the local parks and I was just walking around without any shoes on on the grass and what that what that bug is it's smaller than it's smaller than a tick but then they bury themselves right underneath the skin and then they just soak up like blood and stuff like that so uh, that's something you got to be aware of uh, if you come out this way places like uh like Seattle where it rains all the time um, the ground is just phenomenally clean there. You don't have any parasite, parasites or ticks or anything like that in the grass. That's not the case here. And I'm very wary about walking through any type of grass around here because getting, getting rid of those, getting rid of those bugs is like a, like a two week process with a special type of shampoo. And I, I talked a little bit, bit about that when I was back home on vacation, but I, I, like, unless you come here and experience it, it's, 
people aren't really going to know what that is. Like the worst you get, um, I went, I went back home to Modesto. That's another one of my homes there. And, uh, the worst that you get, if you're hanging out on the grass there is you just get itchy. There's no like parasites out that way or anything like that. Probably it's like desert and it's really hot out there. Uh, but that's not the case here. So when you're walking through the grass here, you just want to take, you just want to like elevate your steps like straight up, like you're marching. And then that will allow you just to walk over most of the grass here in case there's like any bugs on it or anything like that. <sighs> Another nice view here. This is actually one of the few reasons why I really enjoy it here. And uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be stuff like this. Lots of activity to do around here, boating. Um, I wouldn't go swimming in the James River, uh, but uh, people can do whatever they wanna do. But you can go swimming around here, you can do all kinds of stuff. You just can't do that here at, at this park because it's not really allowed. Uh, if you look over there, there's like a cinder block uh, on the sand there. So lots of lots of uh, people who do historical historical uh, like historical stuff. I don't know what the actual terminology is. They'll uh, dive into the water and they'll pull up history from way back when of when the colonists first got here. They'll dig up these areas and try to find all kinds of crazy stuff like that battle I just read about. There still might be a lot of that just left over in this area and people just haven't found it yet. Like nobody was documenting what was going on back then. It was it was fight or survive or flight like back then. It's because the way this place is, the way it's so hot here, the way the sun beats down on people, the way how there's like a lack of fresh water around here just makes it that kind of place where I'm lucky enough to live in a time where there's act, like actual infrastructure and street lights here. Uh, back then, it would you would have been hard pressed to survive here. That happened to a lot of the colonists. A lot of them passed away during like their first year here. There's only so many areas where they can dig up wells on that little island in Jamestown. And if you go there, you look, you see like four or five wells digged up. Or was it two or three? I think it might be two or three. And then once the well was gone, they, they turned they turned all of that into like a garbage dump, man. So you can look in there and you can see garbage from way back when, like pipes, bottles, all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's get back up to the trail here. And uh, a lot of what I'm doing right now kind of plays into building myself out a uh, minimum calorie body, uh, body here. So... Um, about 800 calories for lunch here so even walking this far I'm like really I've depleted most of the calories that I need. and how I look at it is I look at calorie units in versus calorie units out like I'm gonna make sure it's safe to cross here man I would become a park ranger here if that was like available or something to do like work in an environment like this all day I think that would be nice oh that's it's actually not a bad idea. I do enjoy, do enjoy coming out here. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find the Meadows Trail. Oh, that's they have a a statue out here, and it's quite an interesting statue. I don't know if I'd really become a park ranger. I don't know the details of how to get into something like that. If you're coming from Seattle, or if you're from the Seattle area, like. Like, the idea of just doing trades out there is not really a thing. There's not a lot of trade schools out that way. It's mainly about technology, because that's the home of Microsoft. That's the home of Google. That's the home of Amazon. Uh, a couple of other smaller uh, uh, computing-type companies that I'm not going to name off the top of my head, because I don't remember. But uh, this piece right here... Uh, this, uh, it's probably going to be the last part of this video here because it's coming up on 15 minutes, which is 
getting kind of long. Definitely, definitely an interesting piece of art right here. It says here, the restoration of Anna Hyatt's Huntington's Conquer the Wild. So, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's a lot of places out here that are just left unconquered or left uninhabitable because it's just not really possible. I mean, you, you kind of see that in every state really you see that in the northwest former mining towns that have modern infrastructure but are, are completely abandoned because the mines are no longer in use you see that on the west coast former fishing towns no longer any use i'm sure they have that out here like there's a power plant in this area and the area all around it is a uh, wildlife reserve so it's like the most natural area around here uh, but i think there was a few settlements in there that were abandoned as well <sighs> so i'm back on the trail here with all that being said i will catch you guys in the exit video